hasten earnest, earnestly to the remembrance of God and leave off business and traffic that is best for you if you but knew. And when the prayer is concluded, then you may disperse through the land and seek of the boundaries of Allah and remember God frequent that ye may prosper. And the Imam say, it mean prosper, it mean to make profit. This is what we're talking about. Prosper means to make profit. Imam Muhammad also said, Allah has put into one focus the spiritual need and the material need. The devotional need and also the material need knowing always that God is preferred to the worldly gains. This is a talk that the Imam gave in 1985 and um, Moscow's I, think, yeah, I don't know what number it is, but it's, it's in your brochure that I purchased from y'all. Uh-huh. And this, 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 uh, I, I encourage all of us to get this particular, um, I think it was a talk that he did to the imams. It was 1985. He told the imams to encourage the members of their masjid to support all Muslim invested interests, masjid property, schools, buildings, private business Allah has obligated us to respect honor and protect the interests not only of the masjid but also the members the brothers and the sisters of the masjid the imam says that I have found from experience that when you preach this religion in its true spirit the spirit of openness honesty and freedom then God is with it he blessed that community and what you are fearing, God will take care of it. He said, Imams, well, we do not, well, Imams, we do not want them, the Imams will say to the believers, we don't want the believers to take their money and invest into business and do these things. We need that money for charity. I can't pay the rent or the phone bill this month. So fearing that you won't have money to pay the phone bill or the rent, you will discourage the members of the community from investing in the things outside of the masjid. He says that is short sightedness, sightedness on the part of the imam and the leaders. The imam also said, I have found from experience that when you encourage business and industry in the membership on the part of the individual person, they will come back to you with more zakat. That's Imam Muhammad. That's my leader. <laughs> now I'm going to go into a presentation. Um, he said, what is the uh, lifeblood of any community? It is business. Not big business. But not big businesses. Small businesses. If we look over America, we have many businesses, but we have large business and we have small business, but the majority of the business in America is small businesses. And that's what we represent, small business. We want to get large business, but right now we represent small businesses. What, uh, what, what is the lifeblood of any community? It is business. What do we mean by lifeblood? Lifeblood means that which is most vital. Vital means life-giving force to keep the community going, same as blood is in the life of the person, it's all the, if all the blood goes out of the body, the person will die. If we neglect our business interests in our community, we will die. When Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi immigrated from Mecca to Medina, the first thing he set up was a business. And the master, a bit, the bill, uh, I'm sorry, stop a lot. May Allah forgive me. When the Prophet Sallallahu immigrated from Mecca to Medina, the first thing he built was a masjid and a school. The next thing he did was to set up a marketplace. Do you know who was in control of the marketplace in Medina before the Prophet came to Medina? The Jews. The Jews was in control of the commerce of the, all of Medina until the Muslims set up shop. When the Muslims set up shop, it was all over. Now, we, are, we ask ourselves, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, and many of y'all from around cities around the country, but I, who has control of the commerce in our community today? 
No, it's not the Jews anymore. The Koreans. The Arabs. The Pakistanians. The whoever except for us. And that's what we have to do. We're here to try to motivate us to do set up shop in our own communities. And that's what we have to do. I would like to read an article from Muslim Journal, from Muslim Journal, if I may. Uh, it was uh, February the 15th, 2013. It's, it says, Reclaiming Black Dollars. It was an article written by Jane Klingman. Reclaim, which obvious mean doing it again. There was a time in this nation when black people did all the things we are discussing today pertaining to economic development, empowerment, and business support. So why the emphasis on reclaiming what we had prior to mid-1960? Just take a look at the latest projects, projections of black income. Now he's saying this language, I don't know. Income. Black income in this country, one trillion dollar annually. Is that enough reason to get back to basic economic empowerment versus the dollar that makes their way through our pockets and purses? <coughs> Although it's called black buying power, we must understand that it is only power for those with whom we spend it. Thus, we must get back to spending more of our dollars with our own businesses just as other groups shamelessly and unapologetically do every day. He went on to say, one trillion dollars and still complaining about what we don't have instead of using what we do have collectively to build up and support our own neighborhood makes no sense. As Bishop Luke Edwards, founder of REACH in, Atlanta, in Alabama, told me one day, Jim, Black dollars don't make no sense. <laughs> and that's what we said. Yeah. We have to make sure that we are, our Reagan, be, uh, and the African American leader uh, went to Reagan in, uh, I think it was 2001, and complained about they didn't have any money. The black people didn't have any money. So Reagan told him, he said, go back to your community and tell them to make your dollar circulate at least three times in your community and you won't have to worry about any money. That's right. One trillion dollars, you circulate that in your community. You won't have to worry about being poor. It is my sincere hope and prayer that black people will finally and for all time stop playing into this hype of what our so-called spending power is, moving from down, moving from a demand from the supply, supply side, <clears throat> move from the demand side to the supply side of economic equation by supporting and growing our own businesses. Initial movement, sustained movement that bring to bear our collective economic leverage toward the overall goal of empowerment and respect that comes during these times. So that's an article that in business in our lives, it's in the Muslim Journal, I try to read it every week, but it's a great article, Muslim Journal. I want to ask, do we all we all know what this is, right? We all seen this. Now, as a community, I don't know uh, the person who made this drawing, but it's an excellent drawing. And we have to see ourselves, where do we fit into this? This is a community. Where do we fit inside of this? And there's many things that um but three things I, I see that they left out was Islamic banks, grocery stores, and a pioneer bill. And we have to incorporate all that into our community. That's right. Now, we have products. I'm not going to share too much about my products. Uh, the one that we develop. But um, I'm going to just share uh, two products. Um, Right now we have a true laundry detergent. We just launched this about three months ago, and it's a it's a the laundry detergent is Forex concentrated, excellent cleaning, 